Some of Australia's finest photographers do their best work where courage and creativity meet. Two of this newly formed collective, called Degrees South, have been nominated for the world's highest award for bravery in photojournalism, the Robert Kappa. And Stephen Dupont has also been chosen this week as a Walkley finalist. If you can shock people and make a difference, make people act, either they like it or they don't like it, it's not the point. The point is if it has some impact and it can change something, make people do something, um, I feel it's, it's having its effect. That's what's important to me. And we're looking at the, uh, the, the photograph of the um, Americans burning dead Taliban in Afghanistan. Not only was it one of the biggest stories at the time, it, it changed US military policy, and that felt fantastic as a, as a journalist. Um, it's one of, the, one of the only times in my career that I feel that you know, my work has actually had something, has had some hugely significant impact. 72 images by eight photographers are sleek and potent on the walls of the powerhouse in Brisbane. But the real life of a freelance photographer is difficult, dangerous and poorly paid, leading to lots of what am I doing here moments. The kind of moments where someone could regret not becoming a fashion photographer. No, no, I tried that. <laughs> did a bit of that, did a bit of paparazzi in my younger days. I hated it. I, I could never do that. No, my dream was always to be there to look at real life. The exhibition includes the work of Sean Flynn, who disappeared while covering Cambodia in the 1970s, presumed dead at the hands of the Khmer Rouge. But war and strife are not the exhibition's only focus. Well, Degree South's a collective of um, basically the, I think, the cream of Australian photojournalists. But I also want to say that it's not all about war or doom and gloom. Photojournalism is about everyday things. You know, the aftermath stories, when the picture goes off the front page, you know, and the bang bang's gone. It's now safer to be a soldier, where at one time 5% of casualties in war were civilians. Now it's 97%. Photojournalists can travel lighter and move faster than a television crew or a documentary team. They're often the first to break stories with pictures, and sometimes those stories are in Australia's own backyard. Here we are in the South Pacific, this should be the region that we not only embrace, but we should know better than, than anyone else. Um, and yet it, it remains comprehensively ignored. And when I came back to Australia in 94 and found that the Bougainville War was still going, and this was kind of Australia's little secret war in the backyard, uh, and the fact that no one had really sort of been on the island to look at it from a rebel perspective, I had these people telling me, we are at war with Australia. So suddenly, I wasn't covering some sort of Southeast Asian tin pot dictatorship, I was on the other side of my own government. So the more I got into it, the more I realised how many great stories were going on in our immediate region that weren't being told, uh, and yet had implications for Australia. And I think that's what we're seeing now with a number of Australian military involved, you know, interventions in the South Pacific. Finally, the pennies dropped. This is our hood and we need to get to know it a lot better. The exhibition is set to tour nationally and it's hoped internationally. And it should eventually become part of a strong Australian tradition of bold, brave photographers. What I want everybody in this country to know is the huge tradition of absolutely amazing photographs that exist in this country. Joyce Evans is a photographer, lecturer and valuer who set up Australia's first photographic gallery in the 1970s. She's been shocked to find that Australia's national archives catalogue our great photographers under their subject matter, not their names. But the photographer was the anonymous recorder of this country. Now we are aware of the fact that they're more than anonymous, they're, they're, they're our artists as well. I believe that we as Australians are still defining ourselves and my function as a photographer is to be part of that definition, to help define it. The thing is that after a little while, you become your camera and when you and your camera become one, that's when you start to become a photographer and that's time. You've got to put mileage in, you've got to put study in, research. You've got to look at other people's work and you've got to know who you are.